we want to get the store name into our data but we lost it there somewhere when we come here to this tab and go back to our query we lost it somewhere there after before combining the tables we have the names here then we combine just the tables that are were in column data and because these tables don't have the name of the city then we lost it okay so one of the ways to solve this is creating a custom function in power query and that's what we will do first i want to say okay how can i get inside that table how can i create an extra column that has the name of the city throughout the column from top to bottom. So this first table, I wanted to say Toronto, 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 Toronto. Then the other table, I wanted to say in that column, Edmonton, 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 and the same thing for the other ones, similar things. So uh, that's what I want. And then if I am able to have those tables the way I am explaining, then when I combine them, and uh, for example, uh, I name that column store or store name, then when I combine them, all the, the store names will come. Let me close my editor here, and we will do that. We will create one sheet here to help us create that extra step in that query, and then we will go from there. Let's use one copy here. So maybe this one is the smallest one. Edmonton, right click, move or copy, create a copy. And in here, I'm going to name it Lisbon. This will be our helper sheet. In here, I'm going to say name one, name two, name three, or it could, it could even be those names uh, for the purpose here, it doesn't matter. The quantities, we can leave it there like that. And I'm going to use this table as an example to create the query that I want. So I click anywhere here in this range and I go data from table slash range. And uh, my table has headers. And I got this table here. The first columns were already recognized. The first row was already recognized as column names, the column headers. I got the change type. I don't need a change type step. Let's delete that. And now let's create what I want is to create a custom column here with the store name. So as an example, let's go to add column, custom column. and let's say this column will be named store and i want that throughout this column i want to have the word lisbon as an example for now okay and i press okay so now i have a table with the column that i need but now i need to make this dynamic I don't want it to be always Lisbon for all the tables, right? And not only that, but I also want that the table that comes here that shows uh, in the first few columns is the table that I have in each one of those cells in my other query. So I, I need to have two dynamic factors here. We can call them parameters, okay? Let's come to view advanced editor and in here i can change my code this is the code that generates this query and i want to say okay before you start you need to know that you will have two things that will be variables they will be different from each time that i want to apply this query from time to time one of the things that will be different is that the, the, the store name will be different, right? The store name will be different. So instead of Lisbon, I want to create a variable called store name. And I instead of Lisbon, every time I use this function, I want it to put here the store name, whatever it is. And we will see later 
where the store name will come from. Another thing is that here I'm using table at column and I say to this table in the source step, add a column named store and each cell of this column will have the store name and the store name will come from somewhere else, will be fed to this function. However, each time I do this, I don't want to be using the same table one. The table one is that table in the sheet Lisbon that I just created. So I want to get rid of this. Okay, select that and delete. And the source here will be the store table, whatever that is. We will see where to find that store table. So the store table will also be indicated here. So we need to do something else. We need to say that I'm going to give two parameters to this function. The store table will be a table, so as table, okay? Table needs to be with lowercase. And then the store name as text will be a word, right? and text is also lowercase. So by doing this here, before typing this here, before the let statement here, the, where, where the query starts, and then adding these two parameters to our code, we just created one custom function that is called table one at the moment, but we will change that name. So let's click done. There you go. You see how this changed immediately? Let's name this fn get store name. So get the store name for each one of the tables. Press enter. Okay. So now we have a function that has two parameters. And if we see here on the queries pane list on the left, on the queries list, we can see our function has this different uh, as this icon indicating this is a function. So now we can co go back to our main query. And before we combine our tables, let's go to the step before that step, remove other columns. And I'm going to create a new column here using that custom function. So I'm going to come here and go to add column, invoke custom function. I'm going to call a function to create the column for me. Insert step, yes. Now it asks me, okay, how do you want to call this new column name that we are about to create? I'm going to call it store data. And what is the function you want to use? Is this one is the only one we have? The minute we choose that, it recognizes that we need to indicate two, it has two parameters and we, we need to indicate to tell the function where the values are coming from. For store table, they are coming from the column data. This is where the tables are. Okay. So I can come here and say it's a column name and it's in the column named data. Okay there where can i find the store name to put uh, in my function the store name is text it's indicating here that is text but uh, it will come from the column name here so i'm going to choose column name and now i'm going to choose column name okay so so we are creating a new column called store data to create that column, we are using a function called fn get store name. That function needs to know where to find two things to create the result of that function. Needs to know where is the store table. It's in the column data of our previous step. And where is the store name? It's in the column name in our previous step. Look at this column, get the name from the, st the store from there. Look at this column, get the table with data from there. There's the table there. 
and now create a new table that is the same as this one but has an extra column with the name of the store. Let's see if we got that. We have a new column named store with Toronto, 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 because that's the name of the store there. Let's see here. We have a new column with Edmonton, 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 because that's the name there. So we have in this here, we have one, two, three, four, five names plus the store column. In this one here, we have only the one, two, three, four names plus the store column and so forth. Same, similar to all the other ones, but everything here is dynamic. So you see the power of getting, having built a custom function. Okay, so what happens now when we move to the combined table step? It happens that now, let me close here. Now we should have that column store somewhere. Oh no, we don't have it yet, okay? We don't have it yet, why? Because I didn't change my code here. I'm still saying combine the tables from the column data from the previous step. But now I want to combine the tables that I have in the column store data. Okay. So I need to copy this name. I need to put this name here. Spelled exactly the same way. It was like that. And now come to the end, press enter. And there we go. Now we have the store column here. I will move this right click, move to the beginning, insert a step. Yes, please. Okay. Now, if we go to the next step where we were in um, pivoting other columns, we at that time, the time we did this, when we did this, we didn't have the column store. So if we want to keep the column store, we need to add it to our code here. So in between double quotes, let's type store there. This is the list of the columns that we want to keep and we are unpivoting the other columns. The great advantage of this is that we are not hard coding. We are not leaving in our code the names of the columns that can change over time. We are just referring to columns that will be constant. So that's a good thing. Enter. So now we got our store column throughout our resulting table here. When we go to renamed columns, that's good. Nothing to do about the new column. Reordered columns, we have the store at the beginning and then vendor, that's fine because here we don't refer to the store. If we want to make sure that the store will always show in the correct place, maybe we can type here store and then vendor product quantity to make sure everything will show in the correct place and order. Change type, we it's the type time to add the changing the store type so we can do it using copying or we could even use the buttons probably most likely power query will will combine the two steps into just one but i'm going to type in here and i'm going to say so i copied and pasted i'm going to say store and say that store is type text okay Nice. And then stored rows, uh, sorted rows, sorry. At the end, we want to include the store first. Uh, let me think. Yes, store first. So similar to what we just did, let's copy this portion here. So I copied and pasted now that this portion of code here. And I'm going to say that here for the column store, I want it to be in order ascending as well. So, and because it appears first, if you pay attention to this here, you can probably see there's a one and a two. Uh, when I press enter, it should be one in store, then two in vendor and a three in product. See, enter, there we go. Okay, you can see these little numbers here. So it says the store, First, I want to sort store alphabetically. Then within each store, I want to store the vendor names alphabetically. And then within each vendor, I want to sort the products alphabetically as well. So that's what that means. 
And so now we are ready to load our data. Home, close and load. And let's see what the result is. Let's go to all sales. We don't have the store column there yet because, but we can see it here in the pivot table columns that uh, it was the, the list of fields, it was loaded. Now we just need to put it where we want, maybe before the vendors, vendor names. And there we go.